What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video here today. Going over some more details about Brian, Taylor, and Sydney more specifically. So Scream 7 we know is casting. It's 100% underway at this point. Last month I shared they were casting for a character named Taylor who is supposed to be the daughter of Shannon, but Shannon is likely Sydney, and Sydney and Kincaid are very overprotective of Taylor, but none more than Sydney, it seems. That's who Taylor seems to be taking issue with in this upcoming story. Taylor is described as smart, tomboyish, and rebellious, but how is she rebellious? I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. Earlier today, I shared that video about Taylor's fringe, which came from Daniel RPK. You have Brian, Taylor's boyfriend, who she has been dating for over a year, Chelsea, Holly, Logan, and then there's a character named Jennifer who was Logan's mother and expected to be a friend to Sydney. Now I'm going to get into a scene we can potentially see in the seventh film and how rebellious Taylor is trying to be despite her parents. More specifically, it seems her biggest gripe is with Sydney. In the original film, we know Billy interrupts Sydney at night after The Exorcist was on and got him thinking of her in screen four. Trevor was waiting for Jill to surprise her in her bedroom and Sydney interrupted his efforts to get back in good graces with her cousin. Now, in Scream 7, one of the ways Taylor is going to be rebellious. Now, before I go any further, I will say all this is rumored. It's not confirmed. It's not official. The source of this, though, is quite credible. Taylor is going to be rebellious by trying to lose her virginity it seems now i'm going to get into a little bit of a theory at the end of this in the original film sydney's intimacy problems were theorized by tatum to be connected to marine's all time untimely death and more importantly during the film her inability to decide if billy is trustworthy or not so sid had her guard up because of what happened to her mom and other reasons but her daughter has other plans and seems to be doing the reverse because of her mom's unwillingness to just dial it back a bit in terms of how overprotective she sees her mother so she's trying to just you know say fuck you i'm gonna do xyz and do all the things you clearly don't want me to do so there's a scene plan for scream 7 where taylor sneaks into brian's bedroom while he is sleeping she startles him and even goes through similar lines of saying well it occurred to me yada 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 she makes it clear she's been doing research into how horny teenage boys get she's very certain about doing this with brian she wants to have sex with him and she mentions how her overprotective mother specifically makes it impossible for her now brian isn't convinced that taylor wants to experience something special it seems that taylor to him is more interested in checking off a box considering her attitude towards sydney it's of course obviously connected to that so brian's not interested in helping taylor get at her mom he really wants the first time to be special his hesitance is also due to the fact that taylor hasn't even told brian that she loves him and they've been dating for over a year sydney has set a bunch of rules to ensure taylor can't have any visitors in the middle of the night and Sydney's house seems to be set up in a way that makes it hard for Taylor to sneak out, which is why she decides to sneak into Brian's room. Now, in true Neil Prescott fashion, Sydney interrupts this little adventure of Taylor. And yeah, you you probably can guess where it goes from there. It sounds like a nice callback. It doesn't sound like it's doing, of course, all the things line by line similarly. But I do like the inverse. I'm not going to lie. The inverse of it all in comparison to the boyfriend sneaking into the girlfriend's room this time around it's your girlfriend sneaking into the boyfriend and there's of course justified reasons for that that we will learn because sydney's house apparently isn't that easy to sneak out of and it sounds like taylor just did this on the first time tonight at least that's what i'm led to believe however the thing that's sticking out to me why hasn't taylor told brian that she loves him and they've been dating for over a year i'm starting to wonder has Sydney's overprotective ways birthed a rebellious daughter who, through her own unfortunate actions, not knowing that her mother does know best, has done something out there in these streets that has resulted in the spawn of a new ghost face? Just throwing that out there. Is it possible that Taylor herself isn't a virgin the way Brian thinks she might be? Or does Brian know Taylor isn't a virgin and just wants their first time together to be special? I'm wondering, is it possible Taylor has already had sex? And I talked about this with a night with uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, but I'd, I'd rather see Scream tackle this, honestly. I'd rather see this from Scream. What if Taylor already had sex with someone prior to Brian, 
got pregnant and not only did she of course get pregnant she's not pregnant now she had an abortion and this is what could be rooted in Ghostface's motivation this time around some type of commentary on that while commentating on true crime and yeah you can take it from there I'm just thinking about why is it that she hasn't said I love you yet there, something about what she might already have done might be connected to that. There's no telling. Has she actually slept around with multiple boys at school? That's the other thing. Maybe this is actually the person across the street, Logan. Maybe Logan, who is supposed to be like this Ted Bundy type, they, they say. Maybe there's a history there. And Logan is mad at Taylor for something that happened when they got together. She got rid of their child. He doesn't like that, and they can commentate on it through a killer reveal. And also, again, lean on the true crime stuff. And if Logan got her pregnant, what if, as a result of Logan getting her pregnant, in the midst of it all, after it was all said and done, after the abortion was done, what if Taylor, knowing that this was not something she discussed with Sydney, but rather probably discussed it with Mark, who kept it a secret from Sydney just to try to make this juicy in some capacity, just to throw some drama in for the sake of the story. What if she lied and told Logan, I can't do this. My mother's not going to let me do it. And that is where the toss in comes for why Ghostface is now targeting Sydney once again, because Sydney is the one who convinced Taylor to get rid of Logan's child. And then also as a result, taking it out on Mark, because obviously if your mother was in on it, you, your father must have been in on it. But Taylor's not going to tell Logan the whole picture. There's I just think there's something there between Logan and Taylor because he's described as the hot neighbor with Ted Bundy vibes. I'm thinking they have a history that's going to be explored in ways that is connected to Taylor's rebellious side. And I think that's going to be how we come to learn this is what's motivating Ghostface to go after not only Taylor, but Sydney as well, because Taylor's out here lying on Sydney's name. Just something to consider. You know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Your name is video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.